Ring gap setting is very straightforward. The rings come one, two, and three, where one is the top, two is the second, three is the control ring. And there is some paperwork that comes with it that tells you what you've got to file the gaps to. As I'm running a four inch bore or 4.03, so there's not a lot in it. Uh, highlighted in green, I'm going to do for circle track. Uh, depending if you're going to do nitrous or turbo then your gaps are bigger so it's important to remember what it says at the top there which is the bore size times 005 so that's five thou so it's only four inch bore four times five is 20 they've already done it for me so i want 20 thou and then on the second ring i want 24 thou and the oil control ring is 15. Now, I've already gone ahead and done all that. Uh, I won't bore you with the facts of how to do it. Again, there's plenty of articles on YouTube on file fit rings. Just search for file fit piston rings and uh, it will take you through it in detail. So I've already done mine. So that job's out of the way. Right, that's done my top rings. And I've got 20, 20, 20, I went a bit far with that one, 23. Over here I've got 21, 20, 20, and 20. So I'm more than happy with that. Now I'm going to do the second ring. Right, that's the second ring now done. And I've got 24, 24, 24, 24. Bit far on this one, 26, 24, 25, and 24, and we're looking for 24. So the next ones to do now is the oil ring, and to my knowledge they shouldn't need filing at all, but we'll have a look and see. Right, this is where we're now going to fit the crank, it's going to be a dry fit with the plastic gauge to see what the tolerances are. Make sure they're within spec. So to make sure this is a dry build, where the actual bearings drop in, that has to be a clean dry surface. So we're using a brake cleaner. Just wipe them out. And the block will be fairly cleaned after we've done all of this. So I'm not too worried about uh, any rubbish going down into the oil lines at the moment. And then just wipe around where the end caps will drop down. Make sure there's no swarf or bits sticking up. I've already fitted ARP studs. Just give them a little wipe. These are just screwed in finger tight and then the Allen key just knit and on the threads again use the assembly loop. And then we have to repeat that process on the caps. Again wipe the cap thoroughly on the inside and on its mating surface. So if we do that on them all They are numbered, but uh, if you lay them out, as I've done there, I'll just show you. Here, you can just see them top left hand side. If you lay them out in the order they actually go on the engine, then there's not going to be any mismatches, wrong caps. And ready to go on and then the actual bearings which come as part of the kit the bearings themselves but again they need a good clean so 
Probably wise would wear gloves, as this stuff does take all the uh, oils out of your hand. Make sure it's thoroughly cleaned. And again, we're ready to drop this one in. They have tangs. That tang is only on one side. And it's important that lines up with the tang in the block. So drop them in. Drop the tang bit in first so it lines it up. Put your finger on top so it's flush. And then gently push down on the other side. And then push down in the middle. And again, making sure that we're level each side. If we're not, then using a, a plastic end of screwdriver, just gently tap it until it's flush on both sides. And we move on to the next one. important you do do the cleaning because they've got all sorts of uh, chemicals from when these were made and you don't want those on the bearing surfaces. Again, tang, tang, flat or level with the block and then gently push down. And again, use the end of the screwdriver if you have to. Just gently tap them down to the flush on both sides. When you come to do the middle one, which is a thrust one, they are different. One has a slot in it, one doesn't. The one with the slot is important. It goes in the middle one. Or the middle one on the block face, should I say. Again, we do the cleaning. Again, this one has a tang as well. So line that up. And push down. That one is a little bit tighter because of the thrust bearing on each side. I shan't bother to show the final two. Uh, let's just repeat. Right, that's all bottom bearings in, or block bearings in. You can confirm you've got the right ones in. Very easy. If you just have a look down where the slot is, you'll see there should be two holes. One is the oil feed to the main bearing, and the other one is the feed that goes down to the camshaft. So as long as you've got view, of two holes on every single bearing and you know you've got them in around the right way. We then repeat exactly the same thing with the remaining bearings to actually go into the bearing cap. Again a good clean And these, because they go in the bearing caps, you notice there's no slot in them. And I'll just double make sure it's clean. 
And again, you'll notice there's a tang or a hole or a slot, should I say, for the tang. Place them in. Flush at the top and then push down and then push them down with your fingers and then if need be gentle tapping until he comes in flush then we move on to the next one which is uh, in this case number four and quick wipe line up the chain and pushing down same as before And number three is the one that goes in the middle and takes up the thrust. So we use this bearing for that one. And quite a quick wipe on the centre of them. As before, we have cut out and the chain. And then we repeat that for the final two. Right, so I've now done the five bearing caps. What I like to do at this point is to just drop on each cap in its correct location without the crank in there. And then do a sort of a half assembly. We'll just do it on this first one so you can see what I'm going to do. Anyway, so finger tight. And then sort of a quarter turn on each one just to bring the cap down. Until it feels tight. And then I put about an eighth of a turn on. Well, that's it. That now has seated the cap onto the block and has made sure that the bearings are now flush with the block in the cap. So I do that on each of them, which we'll go ahead and do. Right, I've done that on them all and I'll just back them all off now so I can take them apart. I haven't actually used any RP lube at the moment. As for the tightening I've just done there, it's not necessary. But I shall be using the proper lube when we come to torque the crank down, or the mains down, so I can use the plastic gauge to work out the tolerances. As I'll be torquing it down to the ARP recommended torque, which is 70 foot-pounds. And obviously it's important to use the correct, lube, correct ARP lube, which they supply. So the next job, once I've taken these off, is to lift the main caps, and then drop the crank in. We do that dry. It's important not to rotate the crank and to confirm or just to make sure that the bearings are clean, no debris, and the actual crank itself is also clean. With all of this is straightforward. 
I'm sure you've all done before. But for those who haven't, I thought it'd be a good idea to explain exactly how I build up an engine. Although, of course, this is my first V8. The mains will be quite tight now because they drop into a, a cut out either side on the block. So using a nylon headed hammer, just tap them up gently until they become free. And again, put them to one side in the order they came off. Makes it that much easier putting it back together. to load in the crank. I, in my case I've bought an Eagle internally balanced crank because I don't want to add any weight to the flywheel or anything else on the outside. It comes with a key or ready fitted which surprised me. I thought it would come not to come with the minus the key. So the next job is an inspection of it which I've already done and then we need to wipe and clean all the bearing surfaces. Again, we use our brake cleaner, just wipe them over. doesn't come with a spigot bearing, so I bought one separately, I'll give you the part number for that later on. Right, so there we are, we're now in a position to actually load the crank into the engine. Right, I have the crank, and I'm going to drop it in very, very carefully, very slowly. to get your fingers caught anywhere. It's a quite a tight fit. There we go. Try not to get your fingers caught under the end here where the actual oil seal goes and where the flywheel bolts onto. So that's the crank in. Try not to rotate it as there's no fluids in there or no lubrication. So the next job we have to do is to add the plastic gauge. Rather than me explain more about plastic gauge, the best thing is for you to look it up on the internet. It tells you all about it, how to use it. It's basically a very thin calibrated rod of wax, which we lay on the bearing surface clamp it so that the actual torque is going to be used at, untorque it, take it off and the actual wax will have squished out. And depending how much it's squished out, we measure with a gauge here and the gauge has got two settings, one is metric and one is in thou. So that's the metric side, and that's the thou side. So you line that up and that tells you from one thigh, one and a half, two and so all up to seven thigh. That will tell you what your clearance is. So that's what I'm about to do now. I'm going to take out my first one. It's uh, exceptionally thin. So we just take one out. We break off what we need, which is a very short length. And we lay that on the bearing. Now it tends to wander around a little bit. Right, so I just put a
segundas também. Just to make the surface a bit sticky. And we lay on our plastic gauge. So again, just a light smearing of assembly lube, just so the plastic gauge sticks. Just cover this side to do it. Easiest things to do. So then we have the caps. So we start down the other end. One. Now in this case, now we're rebuilding it and we're going to be torquing these down. It's important we use the correct assembly loop to do the job. So we use the actual one that comes with the kit. And the way I tend to use it, it's very mucky this, it uh, goes everywhere. Let's just smear some around the face where the washer is going to go. Do this on each of them, but I'll only show you doing it on number one at the moment. And then drop a washer on, making sure you've given it a clean beforehand. Again, we don't want any impurities when it was made. So you can clean it with brake cleaner. Just drop the washer on. Do the same for the other one, the other side. And then taking again your loop. And smear some around the actual thread itself. Take the nuts, make sure they're clean. Give them the spray. And take a dollop of the lube. And put it on the face, face of the nut and up into the threads. And taking down finger tight. Do the same to one on the other side. Again on the face with the nut and a little bit up inside on the threads. Finger tight. And we do that on the remaining four main caps. This is how I set up my torque wrench to make sure that I've got the correct torque set. Um, my torque wrench is in newton meters and obviously most of the time working foot pounds. So I've got a pivot point there exactly one foot away is another pivot point goes down on a pair of bathroom scales. The scales I set to pounds so it reads off directly foot pounds. So, for example, if I wanted a 50, the first thing I do is load in the torque wrench, set it to what I think should be about 50, give the scales a little bounce, which turns them on. It's now reading pounds, and as I apply the force, 12 pounds, 13, 14, 17, 18, 19, 21, 23, 27, 28, when it clicks, that's what I'm at. But you've got to wait for the scales to not go off. 
Right, it's got to go a bit quicker than that. 28, 30, 1, 2, 4, 6, 38, 40, 1, 43. Not fast enough. Forty-six, forty-eight, fifty. So I clicked at fifty. Let's do it again. Fifty. It's not seems to be working, all right. Obviously, there's some resistance in the pivot point there, but I think that's quite negligible uh, compared to trying to set it on a, a screw joint on the actual torque wrench itself. Right, so the mains are just snug tight. The actual ARP spec is to torque them to 70 pounds foot, which I'll do in two stages. So I'll go 50 first of all, and then 70. The order is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I've numbered them so I know where I am. So we'll start off with number 1. And the actual size that we're using is the 11 sixteenths. I've set my torque up to 50. Here we go. Just taking down a bit on each side. And then we go for 50. And the three. Ten. And then we're going to do them to 70, so I just reset the torque wrench. Right, I've reset my torque wrench to 70. So here we go again. So we start with number one. Two. Right, so that's the mains all torqued down. It's easy to we don't rotate the crankshaft. So now we back them all off, take the mains off, and see what the plastic edge says. Now to undo them, we do it in the reverse order. So we start with number 10, and we just back them off a bit at a time. So we come off about 16th of a turn on 10, 9, 2, 1, we do it again, 10, 9, Two, one, ten, nice and easy, nine, three, two, one. Well, I'll go ahead now and do those by hand. All right, that's the nuts all undone. Now we have to remove the end caps. We'll be careful here because we don't want to disturb the plastic gauge too much if we can help it. So it's a little bit of knocking backwards and forwards or pulling upwards slightly. And again, don't want to rotate the crankshaft. So that's the first one off. Now we do the next one. And number five. Right, now offer up the squidgy. And we'll see what we've gone into. 
So we will use the, right, let's bring the camera in so you can see. I think we can see that they're all about the same. What they are, I have got no idea until I try and find one that matches. So I'll try and do this. So that's reading 1.5 now. It's certainly not 2. And it's certainly not 1. Oops, where are we? Let's do that again, shall we? Where are we? Let's bring it into focus. Right. So it's not 2. It's pretty close to 1.5. And it's certainly not two. So we're looking at 1.5. I can't get in there, but I can check. I can look at the next one, wherever it's gone, there it is there. That's pretty much the same. That's pretty much the same. That's pretty much the same. And the end is the same. So they're all reading one and a half thou. So my measuring is one and a half thou. So I'm more than happy with that. Uh, yeah, I could have probably gone up to two, but one and a half is okay. Maybe it was a little bit less, so maybe 1.4, 1.3 which proves that the line boring was successful and the fact that I got the same reading on each bearing I'm more than happy with. So uh, well done Cole. Right let's move on to the next section which is I'm now going to assemble the crankshaft into the block with it oiled up so that I can then add the con rods and torque them up again with the plaster gauge to see what we're getting with those. Now, again, they should be spot on because that's supplied by Eagle. There uh, being no grinding or setting up for that. So it'll be interesting to see what they come out with. And then once those are in, I can then work out how much material I have to remove from this end so that the rod end bolts on the big ends do not interfere with the sides. So that's the next job. Right, so to do this, uh, we add, again, the assembly lube. This time we actually put it around the bearings. Make sure there's a good coating. All this will have to come out again, because when we come to do the work on the block to relieve the area for the rod end bolts. There's going to be quite a bit of swarf around, so the block will need another good clean. And the thing to remember is when we do take the bearings back out, that we make a note of where they came from, so they go back into their same locations. Right, that's a good coating on there. I'm also going to put uh, a good coating on the crankshaft. Make sure it's rubbed around. Not the easiest of places to get into. To the sides we haven't reached. Dry off my hands, you trap your fingers. It's quite a heavy beast. What I haven't done, of course, so we stop at that point. What I haven't done is lubricated the thrust bearing. So I haven't got anything on there. I must do that.
and ditch it on the crank on the middle bearing. Just coat it around the outside. So we'll have another attempt at putting the crank in now. Yes, it will rotate. So now we we'll put the mains on. But again, we need to just put a clear the plastic gauge material out. That's still sat in the caps. I want you to clean the plastic gauge out of the caps. I cleaned it off the crank. I forgot to do the caps. As they say, it's not detrimental as it will dissolve with the oil. Some lubrication. Don't put it onto the actual surfaces that match with the block. Dropping on and we work our way along. Again, it doesn't need oodles of it, it's quite a sticky stuff. Don't forget to put him on the right way round with the arrow facing to the front. We come to the centre one. The centre one, don't forget to put some around the edge. From the thrust side. Two and number one. A quick clean up on my fingers. Now, as we're not going to be actually torquing this down, but just enough to hold the crank in position. And I'm not going to clean up or re-lubricate the nuts for the moment. I'm just going to tighten them down so they're a nice snug fit. And then probably torque them down to about 20, 25 pound just to hold them in situ. And then we'll move on to doing the actual cob rods. Now that's an area I haven't done before is relieving parts of the block. It's only something I've learned about by looking at YouTubes when you do a stroker crank. I wonder how many people have done a stroker and not realised they have to take any material off. I expect they found out very quickly. We will see. Well, I'll stop the video at that point. I'm just going to snug those down to about £25. Well, I've set the torque range up to £25. So we just go around and nip those down. Right, if everything is still good, we should be able to rotate the crank and it should rotate quite easily. With no hard spots, tight spots. So that really feels nice. Yeah, happy with that. Right, what we haven't checked is the end float on the crank. And that's how far it goes backwards and forwards. 
So we need to sort of centralize it within the bearings. And to do that, using a, a hammer, again, soft nose one, you hit there and there and there and there. That should give us our movement backwards and forwards. I think that's how you meant to do it. So then we can put a dial gauge on the end and hopefully by levering backwards and forwards we can work out end float. Right, doing end float now, I put a dial gauge on the end of the crank and we take it with a screwdriver between bearing surface or right, main cap and lever in one direction and zero the meter, which I have done there. And then we take it in the other direction. And you see movement on the meter and then relax and take the reading, which in my case is 0.5 of a millimeter. We'll just go the other way again to double check it. That's zero. Yep, 0.05 of a millimeter. I don't know what it equates, that equates to not a lot. So that equates to a, a 2000 end float. Well, it's totally brand new and there's the assembly lube between the faces. So probably when that's worn away, we're probably looking at about three to four thousand. Brand new engine, more than happy with that.